Every state has got them. Sprawling campuses with overly ornate buildings infested with the worst, most obnoxious kind of people. No, I'm not talking about public universities. I'm talking about state capitals. All about these distinguished seats of state government and the 10 that do the most damage to the cities they inhabit coming up next. This is City Nerd, weekly content on cities and transportation. Viewer suggested topics always welcome, and this one's an all-timer. Because for those of you who are wondering how to get me to make a video out of your suggestion, loyal viewer, the Butter Milky Way 687, is gonna show you how it's done. Number one, have a good idea. Number two, tell me why it's a good idea, preferably with enough detail to the point where you literally do like half my work for me. Three, I gotta be honest, I spend very little time reading comments. My philosophy is the comments section isn't really there for me to read and react to so much as it's there for all of you to engage each other and argue about stuff. So the odds are against me seeing any single comment at all, but Mr. Butter Milky Way tossed me five bucks and I'm not above being bribed. By the way, full disclosure, when you give me five dollars, YouTube gives me three dollars and fifty cents, which is kind of an amazing rake when you consider what kind of scale this website runs at. Also, Patreon takes a quarter that much and I read everything patrons send me, so do with that information what you will. Okay, let's do a quick hit on why having state capitals basically right in the middle of cities is generally not a positive for urbanism. And I'm gonna use a city I know since I used to have to visit for work pretty frequently since the state capital is generally where the headquarters of the state DOT is. And it's a city I do really like, but it seems to suffer from the usual problems state capitals have, and that's Salem, Oregon. The primary thing is, you're talking about buildings that, for whatever reason, are usually fairly low rise and tend to be situated either in the middle of some poorly conceived green space or worse, a parking moat. Keep in mind, this is usually heavily subsidized parking for government employees and it never seems to get redeveloped. Even worse, these kinds of elements tend to have a malign influence on surrounding urban fabric. After all, if the state government isn't bothering to build anything better than low-rise buildings and surface parking lots, how are you going to generate local support to surround it with anything better? I'm going to pause here to say that generally I am pro-government and I want to acknowledge that being the seat of the state government does bring some benefits to these cities, but your results are going to vary and the cities we're going to talk about today really are getting the short end of the stick in my opinion. My loyal viewer had some sort of unkind views on the relative quality of public agency buildings and maintenance that I'm sympathetic to but I don't want to perpetuate here. Public sector workers aren't always treated the best and I'm not here to pile on. I even respect politicians, a lot of them anyway. After all, governing is hard, especially with a population as abjectly idiotic as a lot of Americans are. Okay, this is the part of the video where I usually talk about what criteria I use to rate the cities and how I weighted the criteria and dumped it into some convoluted equation in a misguided attempt to try to quantify everything. But you know what? This week I'm just going on vibes. So let's just get straight into it. Number 10 is one that shocked me when I really looked at it. It's St. Paul, Minnesota. I guess the damage the government campus does is mitigated a bit by the fact that this I-35, I-94 spaghetti blocks it off from downtown anyway, but it's pretty bad when you have to spin that as a good thing. This one really demonstrates the corrosiveness of bad state capital urban form though. Because the capital itself is extremely low density, you don't really have high expectations for the adjacent land uses. I mean, you're right next to downtown and there's a big Sears, I guess, with a huge moat of surface parking. Is Sears even really a business anymore? Well, I researched it and apparently Sears is out of business and redevelopment is in the works. 
The vacant store off of Rice Street could become an entertainment complex that would hold reality show contests like cooking and singing competitions. You know, I feel like there's a business opportunity for consulting with developers and making sure their ideas aren't completely bonkers stupid. Number nine is Nashville, Tennessee. What makes this one really heinous is the close proximity of the capital influence area to what's a pretty vibrant downtown in a city that definitely has its charms and where the housing has a higher price tag than just about anywhere else in this part of the country. With this one, you know you've got problems when you can go into Google Maps and it's like State Employee Parking Lot 28, State Employee Parking Lot 29. What you're also going to see on this list is a lot of these states feel compelled to maintain some sort of capital mall. You know, as if every state warrants its own L'Enfant plan. But I'm fully prepared to die on the hill of every state capital does not have to try to be DC. Just let Nashville be Nashville. Number eight is Jefferson City, Missouri, which under normal circumstances would probably be a moderately charming city of 40,000 or so with a cute downtown Main Street. But then you get the Missouri State Capitol, which generates sort of a blast radius of parking lots and unpleasant architecture. I said I was doing this on vibes and that's true, but one of the principles here was I didn't want to come down too hard on small cities that were just unfortunate enough to be designated state capital and get overrun by city beautiful slash neoclassical type architectural monstrosities. But yeah, Missouri deserves it. Also, I have an idea about making a bottom 10 list of the worst state DOTs in the country. Just thinking out loud. Number seven is Des Moines, Iowa. You know, this is a city I haven't really talked about at all on this channel, and it's kind of a shame it has to come up now. Des Moines is a pretty solid Midwest river city with downtown on one side of the river, but then you've got this kind of hip East Village area on the other side. The problem is you go much further east and now you've got this state capital impact crater. It just completely cuts off the vibrant central part of the city from the neighborhoods to the east. I mean, can you imagine trying to walk through here any time outside of government office hours or when the legislature isn't in session? Absolute dead zone. Number six is Austin, Texas. The state capital is an enormous super block, basically right downtown, and it's surrounded by a constellation of parking garages. The fact that it's so car-centric and so disruptive to whatever it is Austin's trying to do with its urban form is bad enough, but also consider the fact that the Texas state legislature is basically a malevolent force and this is the place the evildoers converge on. Kind of like Nashville, this is pretty atrocious for a city we're supposed to be paying a premium to live in. And I have to say, I've yet to have someone explain to me what you're actually getting when you spend this much to live in a city with terrible transit and impending freeway widening projects in the middle of a state where the government is actively hostile to you. The breakfast tacos are just okay, so I do want to hear some Austinites make the case. Number five is Raleigh, North Carolina. Similar problems to Austin, but with a twist. A government campus on the north edge of the densest part of downtown, but this one actually mostly retains the city's pretty finely grained street grid. The Capitol building itself isn't really that bad, but what gives Raleigh the edge is all the surface parking and wasted space as you move north. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about the malign influence area of a state capital. It just excuses all kinds of low density, basically anti-urban uses. After all, if your state government isn't going to do the right thing, why should you? Really a shame because Raleigh comes off as a city with a lot more potential. Number four is Montgomery, Alabama. This one's another example of the state capital influence area kind of infecting the rest of downtown. Although it's Alabama, so I don't know that I would have expected a different outcome. 
And honestly, I don't even necessarily think this is quote unquote worse than Raleigh or Austin. Except, look, I realize southern states are trying to make amends in some ways, but the Alabama state capital grounds includes the first White House of the Confederacy. Really interesting choice. Okay, you'd think Confederate monuments would be enough to get you onto the top three on this list, but you'd be wrong, apparently, so stick around for the worst of the worst. First, brief reminder to click all of the things if you approve of any part of this operation I'm running. Follow my account on the various apps if you're a glutton for punishment. Instagram is actually good for Spain content right now. And consider joining Patreon if you want to support the channel directly and become part of, let's become a pretty fun community over there. Honorable mentions, you know, I could do a top 10 state capitals, places that are actually getting this reasonably right because there are some good ones, but I'm just gonna give you one that I think is really instructive and it's the capital of the most populous state in the union. You would think the California state capital should be the biggest purely in terms of like footprint and leasable square footage since they are administrating and governing for the most people out of all 50 states. And there is a lot here and it is basically right in the heart of downtown Sacramento, but I think it's really well executed. The green space that's attached to the Capitol building is a legitimate park. The surrounding government office buildings look like the other downtown office buildings in Sacramento, which isn't a terrible thing. There isn't much in the way of surface parking. I think California basically gets this right, and I don't quite understand how other states can get it so far wrong when they have, or should have, much smaller state governments. Speaking of which, number three is Oklahoma City. Oklahoma has one-tenth the population of California, and the capital is like 10 times worse. The only reason this one isn't higher on the list is that it's not that close to downtown, but well, it's Oklahoma City, so how much damage was the capital going to do anyway? This one is legitimately awful though. It's like a meteor impact site of surface parking lots, punctuated by the occasional low-rise office building. I do always feel like you can tell a lot about the mindset of a State Department of Transportation by just looking at what the headquarters building and parking look like. And this may be the only Capitol campus that has overpasses and loop ramps in the middle of it. Just stellar work. Number two, let me just preface this by saying the counties that comprise the Illinois portion of Chicagoland represent something like two-thirds of the population of the entire state. But the state-level decisions that affect Chicago, one of America's handful of truly world-class cities, are made here in Springfield, Illinois. I'm gonna restate this just because it blows my mind. The level of government that makes decisions about statewide issues and facilities like, say, Lakeshore Drive, convenes in a surface parking lot infested, low rise, low density campus that absolutely devastates the downtown of what might otherwise be a perfectly fine small Midwest city. It's pretty horrifying. You know, I actually have an idea about doing a top 10 Springfields video. This one isn't gonna make the cut. And number one, the worst of the worst, has to be Phoenix, Arizona. I was a bit torn on this because after all, it is Phoenix, so can you really make it worse than what it already is? Well, the state government of Arizona has an answer for you, and that answer is a resounding yes. I mean, I guess this shouldn't be a surprise since the Valley of the Sun took number one in my enormous parking lots video. But look at this. It's like a theme park of everything you can possibly do wrong with the state capital. This is just acres and acres of the worst possible kinds of urban land uses right on the west side of the downtown of the nation's fifth largest incorporated city. I've talked about the idea of a malign influence area in terms of land use and urban form, but this is really a different level of dynamic. 
In the case of Arizona, you wonder if the insane quote-unquote urban design of the state capital actually infects the brains of the state legislators and partially explains some of the stuff that's made this state the epicenter of political crazy making in the last few years. Or was it form follows function? Eh, I can't remember. And that's all I got. Thanks for joining today and thanks to the patrons for helping fund the ever-changing procession of low-budget backdrops I've been using. I'm shooting this one from an amazingly inexpensive rental in Cordoba, Spain. And I'm not going to give you an apartment tour, but it is an absolute shoebox. I mean like using the side of the refrigerator as your headboard type stuff. Great city though, and great people. I do wish I was staying longer, but alas, I'm off to another destination by the time you see this. Keep the great topic suggestions coming. I'll be back with a new video next week, and I'll see you then.